Hi there, I'm Teal Shoop with Sterling Essentials. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some tips about how you can bring back some life into any old dried out leather that you may have. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, oh man, I have this other piece of tack and it's so old, it's dried out, it's absolute garbage, I should just throw it out. I'm thinking, oh man, I spent so much money on all of my tack, but now it's just junked up. I'm just gonna have to throw it away. It's worthless, I've wasted my money. Well, guess what? This doesn't have to be the end of the road, right? There are still so many things you can do to try to bring back some life into your old tack. And we're gonna talk about that today. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be easy, right? There's gonna be a little elbow grease and a little work involved, and certainly it may not work for all of your pieces of tack. They might be too far gone, but at least there's hope, right? There's still some things that you can do. So to get started, let's take a look at this saddle here first. So this saddle came to us in really rough shape. It was dried out, it was cracked, it was rotted, stiff as a board, and had mildew starting. So what we looked at then as our objective really was to first off clean the saddle, kill off the mildew, and to really bring back some suppleness into the leather. And so to get started with that, we really did a deep clean. And that really meant multiple rounds of cleaning and really scrubbing and getting all the crud off the saddle. And for that we used our essential oil powered cleaner, killed off the mildew and, and, and got through all of the crud. After we did that deep clean, then we moved on to conditioning. And for that we did over five rounds of conditioning in order to bring moisture back into the leather and really restore some suppleness. <clears throat> so this was certainly a process. It definitely took a little while and several weeks worth of effort on our part. But you know what, it was definitely worth it. We really brought some life back into this saddle. And I think it's certainly worthwhile for you to give a try. If you have a special piece of leather, something valuable, something that can still do the job for you, it's really worth putting that extra effort in in order to try to bring it back to a usable life. And so, are you willing to give it a try? You ready to roll up those sleeves and get to work? To begin with, this was the saddle that came to us. In pretty rough shape, dirty, grungy, in need of much love. And so the first step, of course, is to get cleaning. And so applying your cleaner in significant amounts, as much as you think you need, be sure to spray into any tooling or detail work. And then, of course, using a rag or sponge, paper towel, fiber cloth, terry cloth towel, whatever you have to really scrub and get into every nook and cranny on that saddle or bridle or whatever you have. Work through all the detail. The whole key really is to get it clean because you can't move on to conditioning unless you have really cleaned every last bit of crud off of your saddle. It's important too that you note any of the detail work like these little conchos here. Really get in there and get that cleaner deep into all of the nooks and crannies on those detail pieces and then rub, rub, rub and you can see then all of that dirt really starting to come off. And this is just key. Don't forget those detail pieces because they make all the difference and they're big spots for dirt to hide and then after you apply conditioner, conditioner can build up and hide there too. So cleanliness is key. Once you're clean, now you move on into the conditioning step. And a little bit of conditioner does go a long way. You only want to get as much on your sponge as you really need. And then apply a light coat. Wait, of course, for it to dry. And then see if you need more conditioner. But again, here you want to get the conditioner onto every single surface. With a deep restoration, you can see a lot of the damage here on the underside of this flap. And usually I don't do this when I condition. I'll just do the finished side. but. For restoration, I'll actually condition the unfinished backside and underside of the tack in order to get moisture into the leather from both sides of the piece of leather. It has a better chance of penetration and really getting into those fibers in order to make a difference. So this is something you might have to do too. One of the things that can be important with the conditioning process is as you condition to supple and bend and flex the leather to help work in the conditioner, but also to encourage the fibers to start to relax and lose their stiffness. 
The thing about suppling as well is that you really want to make sure that you do the suppling in all directions on the leather. So bend it every single which way in order to really encourage fiber relaxation. And of course another thing that you can do to help with suppling is also to wrap your saddle or tack using twine or string in order to encourage the fibers to bend and get a new memory in the direction you want that fiber to relax. But once you're through that process and suppling and conditioning, you move on and now your saddle is looking beautiful. It's basically restored and you can really start to see the difference between these before and after pictures for this particular saddle that we worked on. There's a wonderful sheen. The detail is really starting to stand out. And the beauty of all this is that this is something you can really do yourselves. It takes maybe a little bit of work, some pieces more work than others depending on what kind of shape they're in, but it's definitely achievable. And it's something that you can spend a weekend on and feel really good about now bringing your saddle back to a usable life. So thanks again for watching. This is Sterling Essentials. Be sure to check us out online.